I'd like to call this um, June 19th meeting of the Select Board uh, to order at um, 5.35. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, the first order of our business are the Select Board minutes from, from June 5th. I would entertain a motion to accept those minutes. Thank you, Mandy. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Paul. Any discussion? <clears throat> I mentioned to Cheyenne that Chris Collier had been in the audience um, as well as the other folks that are listed. Um, the only change I have. Um, there are nothing. All in favor of accepting the June 5th minute, minutes, say aye. Uh, aye. Uh, motion passes. Uh, the next item are the warrants for the accounts payable up through today, um, 619. Uh, need a motion to accept them? Thank you, Mandy. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Pardon, what is the wetland mapping? For Arrowwood, Arrowwood Environmental? Uh, the Conservation Commission. We're paying half in this fiscal year out of their budget and half next fiscal year. Rob, what area? So on the 17 acre wood, they're putting that accessible trail in. Yes. And down at the bottom of that property, there's a wetland. Yeah. And they wanted to make a board block as part of that trail project. Okay. And so they needed to delineate where the wetland was. There's the state that regulations about how you can deal within the wetland versus next to the wetland. Okay. So this is the first installment. I think if it's $800. That the amount here? Uh, it's 1,110. Yeah, so mm -hmm. what we were going to try to do is pay 800 of that out of this. Bump the rest in the And the tennis court resurfacing in North Hartland tennis court? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we had a snowmobile go across from this winter. Okay. Just a general question. The IT services contract that we pay mm -hmm. monthly, do you think it's worth a future project to look at that contract to see what we're doing uh, in there? I think we are in agreement with you. And Martin, is it? We're too late for this year. Yeah. That's I've already signed the contract. I mean, you know, if we could get that to review at some point, it's yeah, for yeah. Where ourselves with um, I think we're all in agreement that we would, would want to do that. Um, when does that come around, Martin? July 1st. July 1st. Okay. okay. Oops. It's all done. I already pulled the trigger. I had to fix a couple of um, uh, licenses on the contract, but it should go down a little bit for next year. Any other questions on the invoices? Uh, we actually want to, um, the courthouse 
payment of thirty four thousand. So yes, like there's a bond. We we make two payments a year. It's collected on the taxes for thirty four thousand. We but we should only paid seventeen thousand. I think right. Uh, the line that I'm looking at says, when the, uh, excuse me, I can't speak. Windsor County Treasurer of God, courthouse payment one. Yeah, for $17,000. About $34,000. Yeah. Uh, I'll look at that. It should be $17,000. It's half now and half November 1st. Okay. But that's in the next fiscal year. Yeah, it's labeled yeah. next year. Yes, yeah. yep. Okay. I will get that fixed. Okay. It's a thirty-four thousand dollars bond. If you look on your tax bill, you see that we raise money. But the payment right now should be seventeen thousand. That's correct. I think, I think I'd like to do an amendment, a motion that we approve these with the correction of that payment goes to seventeen thousand. Um, all in favor of that amendment? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Any other comments? Um, all in favor of accepting the orders for 2619, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Hearing none, are there any public comments? Rob, I know you have one. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, the Vermont Center for Eco Studies approached me. Uh, they're starting a new study of plants and pollinators, and they wondered if uh, they could use the Somerset Gateway Preserve, that property right behind the park and ride, as one of their study sites. Uh, what this would involve is VCE staff coming every couple of weeks and spending an hour or two on the property looking at flowers and pollinators. Uh, they might set up some cameras to film those. They might collect some flower heads for DNA analysis. Apparently, now, if a pollinator comes and visits a flower, it leaves behind enough DNA that you can detect it and identify what the uh, pollinator was. So they were going to do some of that. Um, they also said they might set up a sign encouraging anyone who was visiting the property to note interactions that they saw on iNaturalist, which is an online database. Um, so I... Um, told them that Carlton mowed that property and they had to stay out of his way if they were going to do this. Uh, I checked with Martin and Phil. Uh, neither of them had objections. Um, the VCE people have liability insurance, and we have a certificate of insurance for them because they're working with us on the Summer Falls ecological assessment. Um, but Martin suggested that it would be a good idea for me to come and just let you guys know what's going on and answer any questions that you might have. So, fire away. I had hoped to see Carlton this uh, past Saturday morning at the Norwich Farmers Market, but it was a bit too rainy for me to venture out. So I'll, I'll rain check. But um, we just want to do the courtesy of letting him know that this is going on. Um, I hadn't heard cameras. Where would the cameras be? So what they would do is while they are there, they would set up a camera to watch a flower and see what pollinators came. My guess is that what they want to do is film a pollinator coming and then take that flower head and do their DNA analysis and confirm, yes, we saw that. And you know, we saw that on this flower. That okay. that's a guess. But the cameras would only be there when the VCE staff were there. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I'm not sure if they would always do it or if they would just do it sometimes. They're going to do this at a number of sites throughout the valley, and then they want to compare the results um, from all the sites. And they said they would share whatever they learned with us, and we can share that with our residents. So that school was in session. It would have been great to get a science class out with them. 
Yeah. To do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions for Rob? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank thank you. you. Other public comments? I, I would just like to recognize uh, something I'm sure all of you have seen. Um, it's our uh, Fire and Rescue Squad 75th anniversary this year. Um, and there, were, were, there was a gathering um, last weekend uh, where some of us did attend. Um, so congratulations to the Hartland Fire and Rescue Squad. And maybe they have another 75 years. <laughs> Um, are there public comments? Okay. Let's go on to all business. Um, um, Martin, do you want to walk us through what's going on with the town manager search? Uh, she has been to the, uh, the contract. Um, do you want to take that one? Yes, sure. Uh, so I think there's a draft contract in the packet. Yes. Yeah. There, yeah that's there's under terms and conditions in that contract that I think our lawyer added. Yes, that's correct. So I took away Tom's contract and had the lawyer put our, so we have solid footing in this process. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, so it's just a, a money piece of that. Um, in Tom's original proposal, there were two options. I think when we had discussed it, we chose the second option, which was not the all inclusive package, but it was you know, minus the uh, contract negotiation with the new manager. And, um, and I think actually, yeah, so it was another piece, but we agreed that we would do, you know, if we had a listing, I think a listing of 10 items. Yeah. We agreed on one and six, including advertising and background checks. So the contract just basically needs to be updated to reflect that pricing. Okay. And you want me to use the another less costly option? Um, I think probably the thing, thing to do is to you know send this contract back to Tom with an ex explanation that we're choosing option two because he hasn't seen these terms and conditions yet. That's correct. But do you want me to have our lawyer put in what we're looking for so Tom can see the total contract, what that, we're looking I for? I think that'd be great. Yeah. So just wordsmith it in contract yeah. terms, not in email. And use the second paragraph down? Uh, right. Is that the one the yeah. board wants? But if you if you look at his proposal, mm -hmm. the language is in there. So. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think right. I'd like to get it to him so that way by July 5th, yeah. everybody can ask questions and we can go back and forth. But the, the, yeah, the explanation made sense to me when I heard it in my head. <laughs> it makes sense to everyone else. Um, just so that everything's clear. So you're talking about on page 105 of the contract in Yes. Compensation, you're going to change that to what's written on this form under letter A. The hourly rate, yes. Okay, yeah, I think that's what <clears throat> that's what, what I was that's understanding. What Jim, yeah, that's what yeah. Jim was asking the board. I think that's what you all decided yeah. the last time. Yeah, yes. you sound right, Mike. Uh, yes, oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and do we have a date when uh, we would meet with um, uh, Tom? July 5th. July 5th. Thank you. With um, the caveat on this very important piece of paper that he is available um, next week, the 26th, 7th, and 8th, if we just want to do a brief meeting with him. Right. So I'm out of town next week. Right. I'm out of town. Okay. Okay. She's here. Right? Um, the napkin is done. Just a background so folks know what we're talking about. Um, we decided to use uh, an experienced uh, person in searches for town managers. Um, and um, uh, we zeroed in on one of two or three that emerged and were 
created a draft contract and then we'll be meeting with that person here to discuss the scope of, of the work. And so we have all, all the parties ourselves and they understand um, what, what's going on. We've also uh, have been working on a job description. Um, or we will, um, with this person, kind of refine it um, so that we are uh, um, capturing everything that we, we feel uh, we want going forward. Uh, two, two points of clarification. For Tom, the recruitment for town, you know, the recruitment piece for town managers is a new business. Yeah. His business up until recently is really being an acting town. Yeah. Um, yeah. The second thing is that DLCT reached out to me, I forget it was Friday over the weekend, and let me know that their contract for the next town that they were going to work on is falling through. So they're asking if we want a proposal. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say unless things fall through with Tom, yeah. we just keep them at bay. Okay. Um, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. What, what about just inquiring on what their true pricing would be? They gave us you know, a contract from another town, right. which is much larger than we are. Yeah. Um, should at least get a copy of the price. Mm. Okay. So I'm curious about why we're not including or we can have some adjustment to the contract that allows us to have him do additional activities, but so, uh, seven, eight, and nine in the services that were proposed by Tom, which is negotiations. The background check number nine would be included. So our prior motion was we would include background checks and advertising. So it's one through six, nine. Yeah, one through six plus nine. The reason, well, the, with the rationale that we had at the time to not choose seven and eight was that we'd probably have to have our lawyer involved anyway. Okay. Um, I guess I would push back on that. We would want our lawyer to maybe develop a contract but I'd rather pay someone, I'd rather pay Tom his rate vis-a-vis -vis an attorney. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pay three times the amount, at least, okay. of an attorney. What so, we want the attorney to do is to get, develop a shell contract for us. So then, if, if that's the case, yeah, that's fine. I think we have to revisit our motion from last meeting. Okay, I'm just changing. So, right. right. Yeah. That's the reason. So, if you know, if we decide to go that route, just add it. So you, maybe you just have some caveats in this, which which allows us to ask him for additional things at a later date if we so desire. But we could sort of stick with the ones we want. Right. But just you know, I think there's other things that he could do that we. I don't think we necessarily need an attorney to do. Right. Yeah. Then, yeah, well, that's that's covered in the language. It's sixty-five dollars now. Right. If we ask him to do other things, so leave seven and eight in. Those are the ones that I pulled out. Um, so, you're... well, I think I think the last statement I heard was we'll leave them out. If we decide later to have him do work in that area, we'll pay an extra right. whatever his extra hourly rate is because that's. Yeah. That's what the contract will be rather than the flat. That's, right. what, I, yeah. that's what I heard uh, uh, yeah. say, which I think is consistent with our prior motion. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want 10 left in or take 10 out also? Um, 10 is just the catch all. Yeah, it? yeah, pretty much. So I gotta keep going back to that page. Uh, so just do 10. We just reserve the right to amend the contract mm -hmm. as needed. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you should be upon by the parties. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll have seven and eight removed. I'll have A taken out. I'll send a copy to Tom. Thank you, Martin. Okay. Um, any other points with the town, town manager search? Okay. Moving on to policing and part one of safety and security uh, discussion. Um, 
apologize for sending something out on a Sunday morning and not getting the packet, but um, I was hoping tonight if folks had a chance to sort of look at the committee charge to gain your feedback. Um, <clears throat> In summary, what while well, these guys are looking through this, um, we're creating a safety and policing committee um, to look at what safety is in here in Heartland, um, define what those those needs are, prioritize those needs, create recommendations on how to achieve them, and draft a, a, a budget. Uh, associated with those recommendations. Um, the committee is going to be made up of two select board members, three citizens, uh, one representative uh, from the school board and an additional representative from the fire and rescue squad for a number of seven there. Um, both myself and uh, uh, Martin would be uh, additional resources. Um, uh, I uh, had confirmation from the Vermont State Police that, uh, today that they will um, supply both a, um, a summary of the incidents, which, um, which Ryan has already given to us in, in detail, um, and um, they will, would be available to talk to this committee uh, on an overview of what safety is in the state. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm hoping that the committee would get the work done by the end of October. Um, that was one thing I was waiting for a reaction for. <laughs> uh, and why we're also looking at once the committee establishes a list of having a, a town wide meeting um, to bring everyone in town, have them a chance to reflect on what safety means. Um, <clears throat> when I look at the incident reports, um, it's pretty varied. Traffic incidents, drug use, domestic violence, stolen property, vandalism, noisy neighbors, mental health, suicide checks, suspicious activities, vehicle crashes, fighting, choking, child abuse, death investigation, dog and wildlife complaints, Alarms going off, sexual deviance in the neighborhood, landlord, tenant problems, and on and on. Um, um, it's kind of the underbelly of our town, so we really need to try to begin to understand um, what, what we need, what we can afford, and, uh, and go from there. So, Thoughts, comments from my esteemed colleagues? That's a good start. I okay. think October, October feels very optimistic. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work to be done, yeah. um, but it's a good place to start. Okay. Well, I'll be here before you know it. Mm. <laughs> Um, something that I've come to learn that I feel is very important, and that I'm asking the committee also to become familiar with uh, what's commonly called the social determinants of health um, and understand how those, uh, depending upon whose list you look at, 10 or 12 items, uh, really impact um, safety and, and the mental health of the community. So, um, this is a big undertaking. I mean, Martin, what is our budget today? 60,000? Yes. Well, with the 85, 85 with the yesterday. Yeah. Um, and as folks know, the background to this is that the Vermont State Police are not able to meet the hours of the, that they are contracted for so that we um, 
then they have pressure at, at the state level to remove themselves from rural policing. Um, so we're faced with, with defining what we need and um, trying to um, figure out what that means. Um, um, uh, we've had three uh, citizens uh, come forward. Um, so, and right now, uh, at a previous meeting, we suggested that both Mandy and Tom be the um, select board representatives on the committee. Um, I don't know if we should ratify that tonight. I haven't heard back from uh, John Sanders or Nikki Buck. So maybe I, we should wait till we hear. I would take what you have and get the ball rolling because October's right around the corner. Okay. Yeah, and, and I would say that, you know, we would like their participation, but it's really their option. Right. Yeah. And really, they can be a, a resource to us, right? They can be utilized as a resource for information for the school level as well as the fire department. Right. The school is important. Well, both are important because there's a, a relationship between the police and the fire and rescue. Uh, and we do have a school safety resource officer today that, that um, would factor into maybe some final decisions. Uh, the three citizens are Trace Tancredi. Um, Chris Nickenberg and Robin Mosier have all approached us. So uh, if the um, board is comfortable with, with those. So have we used the listserv or whatever and asked for volunteers townwide? Uh, no, I did not use the listserv. We just, at the various meetings we've been talking about this, those people emerged and um, declared. The listserv doesn't reach a lot of people. The ones it needs to, because when I go over to um, Three Corners, I get a lot of questions about three, the three, or three Corners Market. I get a lot of questions about the Three Corners Project. And I say, it's all on our website. Oh, I didn't know we had a website. I said, put it on Listserv. Yeah, I don't use Listserv, so. I think, I think the more nimble the committee is, the faster. I, I, I understand that. It's just how we selected people, that's all. So, yeah. because you listened in at a meeting, if you raise your hand. Well, we had one person uh, come to the meeting and, and offer. We had a second person write to us to say they'd like to be on it. Yeah, we had and, correspondence. And a third person approached me twice uh, to sort of say they wanted to be on it. Okay. okay. We spoke about it at least more meetings. Now, yeah. So I think we ought to give the committee kind of flexibility to navigate this. I think we have a good guide here. Yeah, okay. but let's give it some flexibility to figure out the uh, sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, Stacy, just um, maybe a little bit further on Tom's point. Yes, the select board meetings are out there. It, it might optically look better if you did put a little bit more out there, something on the town website um, that you're getting, you're getting together this committee and, and anybody's interested. I would just say that you might want to think about having a good cross section representation for those three citizen members. So if I, I don't know what the three of them are like, but if they're sort of all demographically similar, you're going to have kind of one view. Um, so you might want to, if you've got younger people or um, other people that just food for thought, I know you want to roll on this, but talking about a town represents a whole oh, sure. of people. Um, and I, 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 I would, I feel that if we're having a town-wide meeting, that we recover our base uh, by basically saying anyone who, everyone would have a chance mm -hmm. to speak at that point. Are you having that meeting before um, the committee gets rolling along or afterwards? Uh, it's to be determined. The committee will get started and then there'll be a meeting. Um, that seems like closing the door after the horse is out. Okay. Good. Uh, Dave? Um, Dave Singer. Um, I, you know, I don't want you folks to take this the wrong way. 
But the bad actors or the potential bad actors in this area are, are not waiting for us to form the committee. I know Mandy's going to work hard on it once it's established. But honestly, folks, I think we really need to get the, the can moving down the road. I, and please don't take it the wrong way. I, I speak to you as a citizen, not as Sure. Yeah. Uh, and again, just to clarify, we have signed a contract with the state police to start in July. So we are covered for policing. Um, we just realized that they have limited hours that they can. They can well, we've known that for a long time. Yes, correct. Correct. Right. Um, um, yes. Sherry, Sherry Clark. These committee meetings would be open to the public, mm -hmm. aren't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they'll be posted and the public can attend mm -hmm. and submit any suggestions or well said. Okay. So um <clears throat> just my experience has been that I think we should make it clear that this committee is advisory to the select board. And given the charge it would certainly be nice to have some form of administrative assistance. I don't know who is going to be taking notes, who's going to be following up on various things that we come up with. Uh, I'm just, if you want this to move quickly, uh, you know, we need to, someone needs to take minutes, someone needs to uh, distribute the minutes, develop agendas, contact people who we'd like to talk to, et cetera, et cetera. Great. Um, let me know that uh, the last time we had a committee of this type, it was the um, committee that looked at roads, um, came up with that, with the current current plan um, and we actually rotated the minutes taken within that group and then we leaned on the town manager to um, to set up the appointments for um, the various people that came in to talk to us talk to that committee um, um, I, uh, I hear what you're saying um, and um, I, think, I think that's a good starting point but if there was a volunteer who's willing to take that on that would be great um, yeah, I don't want to volunteer. I think we should provide somebody a stipend or something. Because we're going to need to move. And when you, you know, I'm sorry, I've just had years of experience with volunteer groups and there's no, there's nobody there sort of shepherding it. You know, it, it gets, it gets difficult. Uh, Let's, let's see what we can find. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at Mark and when I'm saying that to see if we can, we can do that. Yeah. Um, Stacy? Yeah, Stacy Brown. Just going to say, sorry, again, on, on Tom's heels, have you been involved in the ARPA committee in which we had basically March, April, May, you know, just about the same amount of time you're expecting this group to pull something together? They're going to be meeting every couple of weeks, if not every week. That is um, a lot and pretty intense to ask people to take minutes and so on and so forth. It, it becomes quite a burden and quite a lot of information. So, yeah, if you can find somebody, I'm definitely going to help you. I don't have any suggestions, unfortunately, for you. Yeah. Okay. I don't have time to go. I'm sorry. Okay, any other thoughts, comments? I'd make a motion that we yeah, charter this committee with the names that you designated and start the project. I'll second that motion. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Here we go. Thank you. Um, Okay. Um, next item for committee commission reappointments. Um, Martin? We'll reappoint. Uh, the board's going to reappoint George. Hi there. You want to come on up, please? Introduce yourself and your reappointments. Hi, I'm Rebecca. 
I'm the chair of the planning commission right now, and we have two members that would like to be reappointed for a new term. And they're here, George Whittle and Dan Germain. How long are your terms? Two years. And they're staggered? Yeah, not these two terms. Yeah, no. Rebecca, the open position that you have, you're still drawing on that one a little bit? And yeah, we haven't had anyone attend our meeting, and we like to have them at least attend the meeting. Okay. And then we have a, an executive session and decide how we feel about the candidates. Okay. Good. Um, <clears throat> Dan, George, any comments or you want to run out of the room or anything like that? <laughs> okay. Do you want to keep this on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and my, uh, my the we reappoint uh, George Will and Dan German uh, for the planning commission. I'm um, sir, second. I'll second. Second. George had his hand. Jerry, your hand up. Oh, sorry. I, I just had one comment. Uh, I spoke to Charles uh, a bit ago and he said that uh, I'm 83 and uh, I've been out of the planning commission for uh, quite some time. Uh, and, uh, left for a while and I'm back again. And I feel very strong. And I think I wrote something. Last time around, you asked us to write something that I sure, uh, to have a file. And I wrote something and said that I feel very strongly that the Planning Commission is a is a uh, uh, institution this time and, and uh, it's been effective. And, uh, but I personally feel that it needs to be a little bit more effective or at least think about what it's doing. And so when I spoke to Charles, I said, well, you know, uh, I think you need to get somebody to replace me, but I'm willing to stick around until that person surfaces. So, uh, and I said that to several people, Rebecca, and so forth. So that's kind of personally mm -hmm. where I'm coming from. Yeah. I've been on planning commission for some time, and I'm, I, I really think it's an important thing. And at this point in time, it's going to become more important in this town. And the relationship with it, your board is going to be more important. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm very aware of the years that you have put on to the, to the commission, and I appreciate it. And Dan, I appreciate your work in the last iteration of the town plan, trying to guide us toward um, where we are. And um, I, um, like everyone, I'm anxious for the town to reflect in the town survey of what's what's happening um you know and i just attended uh, the vital communities housing conference with rebecca recently and um so the pressure on the, our area of the upper valley is is really intense right now um um, and for us to balance the rural aspect of the land you know, with our in-town areas, and then also just how can folks keep large tracts of land um, for getting some additional income, I think those are all crucial things that are, you, as, a, as a commission, you need to be working with. with. So I appreciate your your time and your 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 time as well, Rebecca. So, so we have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So one, thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have uh, two. Um, Contracts that have been submitted for, or we, that's not the right word, for redoing the walking path uh, in Foster Meadow. Uh, Martin, do you want to step us through that? Sure. Um, Cody Small, the Harlan resident, Raymond Logan, Montana Harlan resident also. 
As you can see, Cody came in at 35.8. Uh, Logan was 42,000. Um, we'd like to move forward with Cody Small. Have him start after July 4th. So there's no nothing going on. Um, it will be in the next fiscal year budget. We have a donor that's going to pay half of it. So the town only has to pay for half of it. And um, he's going to fix some of the drainage in the field that gets flooded. And per the state way it's supposed to be properly drained so it's not flooding it somewhere else where it's not supposed to go and um coming to the board to say we'd like to get this started yes so i have a question that i'm sure no one at this table can answer <laughs> um but we have three corners out there so you just go out the front door and eyeball it yeah it's you know a lot of it from that center island is created this way. So we have a lot of runoff going on to private property during heavy rain. With the construction, there's going to be new curbing that's going to prevent some of that runoff. It's also going to be new storm drains. It's going to collect some of that runoff. The question is, where does it go? Because if it goes the field, you know, we may have a logistical problem trying to correct that issue with the volume. So well, the engineers have, 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 so they dug, they dug to make the first, so as you enter the library driveway, on the left and the right are going to be two storm drains. The one on the right is coming down in front of the, the uh, barber shop, the little mall there, the post office, down that curb on the right. sidewalk. <laughs> the drain near is whatever's left over on this side. The, the culvert goes into that field from the state that was installed years ago. They got down there and they found it was broken. Yeah. So they're now, as you come down the driveway on the hillside on the left, they're going to drain the water into there. They don't feel there's going to be a lot of water. Yeah. Um, and the culvert that's over here that goes to this house that gets flooded, that's drained, that's plugged too. The state's known about right. that for years. But if you, so on the plans, right, the existing storm drain and the new ones all go into the same pipe. I don't pipe, know that. Pipe goes in it's on the plans. Oh, okay. Pipe goes in that direction. So my question is, where does it terminate? So if it terminates at the soccer field, you may have an issue. So I think that's an important question to answer before we start work on drainage issues. Just ask for the resident engineer. I'm sure they can't discharge it after the field. No, no. It's going somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so it could be burying it. Uh, so yeah. It could be burying it. They dig a trench and they put stone in and so on. They, they discharge it into the underground. Because I don't remember seeing a culvert on the side of the hill at Mike's parking lot. Yeah. 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 So I'm assuming the culvert goes under roof five. Yeah, it does. And it must dump out and right out. beside the soccer field. Yeah. And yeah. she did say that that was the case. She couldn't say that it would make much of a difference. So we're not messing with that. This this trail does not go anywhere near that. This trail, he's thinking of moving it in so that way it doesn't flood. Bring the trail in four or five feet. In. In towards the soccer field. Soccer field, yes. Right. So that way it doesn't flood. And he was going to also look into making the, the dip that's too steep ADA accessible also. Well, Martin's talking about <clears throat> by the library parking lot where the trail comes up on that south side. Uh, the slope is not is so severe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just Change that. Yeah. So do we have specific activities as far as what these folks are going to do just so we have something to go back on if something isn't done the way we want? I mean, there's we call it, there's no attachment A or whatever no. defining what this they're doing. No, that's what they're using. No. I'm going to have a hard time approving this without some type of an attachment because I have no idea what they're going to do. They're just giving us materials. What did the RP say? Um, I don't remember. It was what to was. reconstitute the existing trail. Yeah. Because it seems as though Raymond Construction and Cody Small had different approaches. Yes. Yeah. 
where did you see different approaches to it? Well, just how the Raymond is talking about swales and things like this. I don't, uh, Cody, Cody sounds like they want to do a containment pond. Is one doing a pond and the other one is doing a, doing a swale? Is that what? The swale, the swale for the water to go down. The, but yeah. then it seems like the swale is to catch the water. Cody is suggesting a pond. How big is the pond? Where is the pond? That's the only one that's rainwater. The point is, we didn't really have drawing. We have nothing to go back upon to say, we don't like you to what you did. Or in a year, whatever they did, something fails. How do we go back to them and say, in the attachment A, it says, I mean, is there a warranty on their work? I don't know that. That's a good question. Can I ask a question? As you, many of you know, I also used to jog all around the soccer field virtually every day. And I've noticed, I don't know what brings it back, but in the south, uh, southeast corner, that was often very dry to the point it was soggy enough that I had to make an arc around it to finish my run. I'm actually on this delineated soccer field. I don't know whether that's going to be a problem with it or, or I don't know if there's a culvert any place there from my I don't know, but it, that holds that, that particular portion holds a lot of what I believe me it does. I have soggy sneakers from two years ago that would attest to that. So, so we wish a recap. Um, I think we have one question on the table. We are probably we need to reach out to Everett Hammond and or Rita Sita to see if they can determine where the storm drains for three corners drain to. So that's one question. And the second question I think is around the specs for these contracts, right? So that we know exactly what we're buying. Now if we get an engineer, it's gonna go up. We're not, I don't think we're asking, I don't know if we're asking for an engineer for the- Cause these guys are probably not engineers. They probably are good at what they do. So you're saying that in relation to which question? To the water. Um, we have folks installing storm drains. Somebody on this project is going to know where that water drains. See, well, I, I'll take a walk over tomorrow and see what it drains. I have no problem doing that. Well, I mean, it's going to be underground. Right. So the pipe could come out under BGs. It could come out from all work. It could come it comes out. out in the field. I know it does. You show If you look on the diagram, there's a diagonal line right across Route 5, right to the, as you're looking at the library driveway to the left of it, because that's why they're putting the storm drain there to come connect into it. Because I was looking at that last Tuesday when they dug down and couldn't do what they wanted. Okay. They could. They dug down, but they couldn't. So they dug down, they found a cement wall in front of the culvert. And then they went to go to the culvert, and there's the original culvert, and then someone put another extension piece into that piece and cemented it. When the cement where it was put together was broken, and they didn't think that they could connect it properly and stay together. So what did they, they do? They fixed that cement, and they, the next day they stood across on the other side of the driveway, the library driveway, and they're hoping to put the, the exit on the, as you drive down the driveway on the left side, on the hill, hill side of the driveway, they want to put it exiting on that bank with riprap or riffraff or something like that. Riprap, yeah. And they wanted to line the bank with the riprap so the water would stay contained, but that's where the water would exit. I'm sorry. No, on the on the hill on the side of the driveway. So you get the soccer field, you get the hill, and then you get the driveway. But gravity is going to want the water to go down the hill. That's correct. But the river unless rapid, we're unless we're the rip wrap is more for stabilizing force. It doesn't yeah. right. The northern goal, right? Right where the northern goal is. Yes. Right. Yes. So 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 my my point on this. It sounds like we're close to knowing where the water drains to. I think we should confirm it. But we're going to increase the volume of water when this project is done. So why don't we have Everett meet with Cody 
in the town packing town manager to have Cody describe what he's planning on doing and whether or not there might be some changes needed based on the change in the drain. Yeah. That that, that's fine. Uh, what else would make deliver a comfort level with um, the, the rest of the work? We, we could break this into two projects, if that's helpful. Get the walking trail moving and deal with the drainage issue in the soccer field secondarily. I'm not trying to turn this in. I just did, I, I just have not seen work like this done where I have no idea what they're doing. Okay. And we're paying $35,000 for it. I agree. And we don't know whether he's warranting his work. The other thing I brought up at one of the previous meetings is for the walking trail, are they talking with Department of Environmental Conservation because they're right next to the bank? Uh, and what are they doing? We, we, we did go through that with um, Rob and Ray going back through correspondence with um, yes. and the emails, yes. Uh, and does Cody know what the correspondence says? Uh, and what he is allowed and not allowed to do? Yeah, he will. Okay. It should be, my mind works the way I think it does. There should actually be less runoff with getting rid of the blacktop on Route 5 around the corner and putting in green space that will absorb water. So they won't have the water coming down around the curb to the drain in front of, uh, in front of Elaine Smith, if you want to listen there, or yeah. Yeah. back by the Ukrainian yeah. Yeah. That's what they told me. There was not going to be much runoff coming down that side of Route 5 in front of the... Uh, so all, all the storm drains are going to be kind of good. To that? No, this side stays over here, and that's going over that way. We're, we're, so there's a drain over here, but it is it is plugged. Is that going to get fixed? I hope so. I don't know that. That one runs parallel to David Hall, then swings and goes across to the top. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm hearing. Um, <laughs> We're asking uh, Martin to meet with uh, Everett Hammond uh, and uh, Cody Small, Cody Smith, Cody Small, um, to um, to talk about the storm drain exits and the catch basin slash work that's being done on that area to make sure that everyone is safe. Should John Leonard be included in that as well, just to be sure that the soccer, like if yeah. things have to be moved or, yeah, you know, be. I mean. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's up to you. Well, I, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and we need to convey that correspondence that um, Rob Andrei uncovered um, between himself the two environmental commissions and Dave Ormiston to uh, talk about that, um, the riverbank and, and the proper continuing to have the proper uh, environmental concerns about that. Um, is that adequate at this point to forward and do we need to not move on this until we get that feedback or can we move on this? I think if, if Cody could describe to Martin what he is going to do, there needs to be some form of a contract. This is not a contract. No, it's an estimate. This is an estimate. So yeah. we have to have some kind of a contract. Okay. Yep. And I can certainly provide you with you know, a contract. And in the contract, we should just have what we call an attachment A, which is just going to outline simply what it is. I need a contract with the LCT. I just haven't right. had him fill it right. out yet because right. I want to make sure. But there should should be outlining. Here's what I'm going to do. Yep. And then he should state whether sure. and he should state that he's going to warranty his work permits to year. Okay. Good. Sounds like a building ordinance. Because <laughs> we asked for that, that simple description and you know that we can hold people accountable. Yeah. 
Not that he's not going to, but okay. he said, he's again, and he's like, he no. Okay. Right. So again, I need help. Can we move forward on a motion to pursue the contract with? We make a motion that we enter into a contract with Cody Small for $35,800. Uh, do you know when we're starting? Anytime after July 1st. Anytime after, okay. Uh, subject to uh, signing of a contract with an attachment A and a warranty of one year on his services. Do you, do you want to approve it without seeing it? Yeah. I don't really want to approve it. Yeah. I, I think we need the info. We got to vote on it next meeting. I mean, I'm in favor of the project. I, I just think we're, there's too many new signs. Let's get the data. Okay. Then, uh, since there's no second, we'll table it and uh, Ask Martin to pursue the aspects that we just described for the contract, the um, more of an overview, as well as uh, an on site meeting with Hybrid Hammond and yourself and whoever else you have to sign up for. I'm also wanting to make sure um, uh, that we keep the correspondence going between the uh, last owner. Yeah, I'll ask John to reach out to me again. Okay. Um, See, we're still pushing forward with this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, there's no additional discussion. We'll get on to new business. Brian, you want to talk to us about the dog warrants? It's really <laughs> form of procedure that you folks need to do each year. Um, so you, you have a copy of the dog warrant. Uh, essentially, you are passing on your duties to the constable around uh, the licensing of dogs. Okay. Can I just try to understand the process to yeah, assuming we get on this path, do we send guys. out notices to you people? So they yeah. should approve. respond, maybe they forgot, and they have the opportunity. How does it work? How does what work? This process or licensing of dogs? The process to get the unlicensed people to license. Well, what you're doing here, so by statute, the select board is charged with, um, they're supposed to do an annual review. Uh, or, or an annual um, list of dogs, uh, but I, I don't know what Mr. Dow has done in the past. Um, it, it's really whatever process he's used, but you're passing on your duties right. to Mr. Dow via this dog mark. So maybe James, maybe you can describe the process for us. So your dog mark, which you sign it, pass it on to me, also authorizes me to seize any unlicensed thing. They don't go that route. Um, they start making the phone calls. Uh, and they keep making the phone calls um, until we get compliance. Um, as long as I can remember, we've never removed any of calls. But I mean, but the phone calls usually generate a, I don't have my dog anymore, or yeah, I'll come down to a license. Yeah, I mean, generally it's people that just don't want to be me and forgotten about it. Um, and there, there, there's a handful of people in town that just won't do it. Don't want to do it. Did you send out postcards before the rabies clinic? I did not. You did not. Give them a heads up. I noticed there's repeat offenders on the show. <laughs> no, it's pretty well known. It's it, something that people need to do every single year. It's on our website. I post to the listserv because you know everybody subscribes to that. Um, I put a poster out front. There were postcards sent, but that comes with a pretty substantial expense and time and. How many people actually respond to that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah.
By statute, the select board is supposed to do a census of dogs and go around town and understand who owns dogs and encourage them to license their dogs. The lists that are provided of the delinquent uh, pet owners are only people that formerly licensed their dog and that didn't license their dog. So there are people that own dogs in town that um, aren't on that list and, and we don't know. Um, I, don't, I believe the select board has, has done a dog census in the past. Um, you know, they did. through yeah. history, I don't know when the last dog census has been done. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so that was when she was constable, so that was you know, part of this process of you uh, passing on those duties and responsibilities um, to the constable. Okay, is this a big list? So the app size? Seems like a lot of dogs. I, I'm going to say it's probably average. But, but, yeah, I was always struck, as Tom said, just with the number of vacancies. Yeah. Um, yeah. well, I remember one year when I presented a search and destroy one of the select board members' dogs was on the list. <laughs> but I, I assume some of these dogs are so yeah. 14 to 15 years old. Yep. And yep. one would think, if you love your animal, you would tell someone about you that my dog is gone. You know? Yeah, I think there's, um, there's certainly ways that this whole process could be you know, modified, tweaked, um, but this is what we're working with, you know, I and mean, as I receive rabies certificates from local veterinarians, I will send a letter to those individuals, uh, pet owners, saying, hey, I got your rabies cert for your dog. Please consider licensing it. Here's the statue. Um, and then uh, Jim Armbruster or sometimes uh, Mr. Dow will follow up with those people uh, who are looking at tips. If there's a, an incident and the dog isn't licensed, uh, Mr. Dow or uh, Mr. Armbruster will encourage those people to license the dogs. Um, but really outside of, you know, removing the dog from somebody, uh, there's not much enforcement. Um, some towns take it very seriously. Some towns fine uh, pet owners $25 every time the constable or other um, as a, a person that has the authority to, to enforce the dog licensing for this warrant. Um, every time that person attempts to go to the property, whether the people are there or not, they are fined $25. That seems a little excessive, um, but each town approaches it slightly different. Um, some I'm trying to find people, but it's it's, it's not something somebody can go to jail for. Uh, it's difficult to enforce, but it is one of the oldest statutes in Vermont, and legally the dog can be uh, obtained. Um, I have a technical question. Uh, do we need a motion or just our signatures on the form? Do we need a motion? Or just the signatures, one more thing. Um, I'm not sure. Um, we could look back through minutes, but I think. I think I'll know. just make a motion. Yeah. Uh, I make a motion that we hereby uh, ask the town, uh, town constable to impound all dogs and wolf hybrids not duly licensed according to law, except as exempted by 20 VSA 3587 that are unlicensed. I have a question. Do we okay. have a question? Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Um, well, it's about the statute. Uh, the statute basically, as I remember, is an enabling statute uh, to enable towns to pass an ordinance. My question then 
Do we have a town ordinance as well or not? Yes, yes. We do. We do. Yeah. Thank you. I just happened to be reading one today. <laughs> okay. Um, we need to sign. Okay, you sign. Okay, we'll pass it along. Uh, all, all, in favor. All, in favor. all in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Just a side note that when I was clerk, somebody questioned licensing of dogs, and I researched it. And the statute to license dog went on the books in 1876. So it isn't something we hatched up. Were you there for that? No, I missed that. We will have to. Our next agenda item is the digitizing the land records. <laughs> um, Brian, do you want yeah. to step us through these? So, uh, as I'm sure you are aware, uh, we have digital land records. And uh, currently, our digitization goes back to uh, 1994, which is uh, 84. And um, there are three more books that are in uh, um, legal format uh, and the scanners that we got when we and Clyde started the, the process with uh, Cots Record Hub, which is the company that we contract with for um, housing the data and providing the uh, access for people to our digital land records. Um, the scanners we obtained can work with legal size paper format, which are the book size that we're using now. Uh, but from book 80 back, the uh, size is, um, I think it's, it's not 11 by 17, but it's much bigger. It's bigger than legal size. And we don't have scanners that can accommodate um, those pages. So we have no way of, of digitizing them ourselves in the clerk's office. Uh, so I have been getting quotes over the years from um, a couple of reputable sources, one of which is COPS Record Hub, uh, the other is Record Force, which is out of New Hampshire, which many uh, Vermont towns have used in conjunction um, with COPS Record Hub. Record Force has the more favorable quote. Um, and uh, they have availability, whereas cost was a much higher quote, and they are um, booked for years uh, into the future, in large part because uh, municipalities are utilizing ARPA funds to digitize their own things. So um, I would like to go with record force to digitize uh, the books that we cannot do ourselves, and that would get us past the 40-year title clearing window and would get us um, to where the books are bound, which would be uh, much more expensive to scan and index those books, but um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a, there would be an immediate need to, to scan those books because they go much further back into time and uh, are rarely referenced for research. And do we have a fund for record? For we do. We have a records preservation fund, which the clerk has access to, and digitization of records is uh, an acceptable use of that fund. And how much does that do? Um, I sent it with the pad with the email i think it's uh, 34,000 or 33,000 somewhere in that range and there's going to be an additional um almost 7,000 i believe that will be transferred into that account um at the end of this fiscal year uh which is um you know, revenue that we've generated in the clerk's office from recorded documents. So for each 
reported document is $15 per page. $4 goes into the records preservation fund. Yeah, there's specifically for these purposes. I believe there's 34,000 in the last year. I think that was the, yeah, off the top of my head. Uh, so there's plenty of, of money in the account to pay for this project. Uh, and I just want to let you know what, uh, what we're doing in the press office. I actually believe that you're in charge of that. We don't have to vote on it anyway. I, that is correct. So this is just um, so we call uh, vote this contract. Do we have to vote to accept the contract? No. Let the town manager. No, 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 no. The records preservation law, when passed, said the clerk will have absolute control of that money. Yeah. Control of the money. But do we have to approve a contract? And he has he chooses who he wants to do it to. I mean, I'm, I'm totally fine if, if you want to sign the contract. I'm not worried about that. I'm saying this is um, you know, just trying to let you know. So um, when something like that comes up, you can see you're on the guard. Um, as well as respect to why, as you mentioned, the clerk has sole access when the initial digitization project was pursued. I don't think the select board knew anything about it. When I took over, I had to bring this life work up to speed with a project that I didn't start. Um, so I'm just relaying information so you guys are aware um, of sure. how funds are going to be used out of that account. Well, Brian, you have uh, money is just out of curiosity, just three different charts that have different amounts. Are you suggesting all three charts? So you have one, it's investment outline. Then you have table two, scanning volumes, 39 through 80. And then table three is scanning volumes 38-1 by index and book number. So is it, uh, is it so all those the, combined? No, um, the, the quote that was uh, 7,200, it would just be scanning those larger books. We would index the I books ourselves. Um, really, we're, we're contracting out um, the capability of scanning those larger books that we cannot okay. do ourselves. Yep. Okay. Uh, so it will create more work for uh, for us in the clerk's office in terms of indexing them. But what I found um, is, is the initial scanning and indexing that Cox did, there were a number of errors because it was done by them in a you know, batch way and they took index information from the card system and from uh, printed indexes and, and there were a lot of errors so i'd much rather do that in house where we can make sure that the index information is accurate we just don't have the, the ability to, to physically scan the documents uh, brian just uh, two questions one uh in the write-up um there's a, a list of attributes um, that Records Force is using to describe what they're going to deliver data record, grantor, parcel number, and so on. Are you comfortable that that's an inclusive list of what you're expecting? Yes, but they, um, that's at a, at a minimum just so the documents can be identified. We're actually going to be providing all of that data okay. in, um, in our system. So the way that it'll work is, is Record Force is basically going to scan all of those books because they have the capability of doing that. Okay. We're going to create a file that um, we'll share with Cox. Cox will upload that information you know, from that file, and then we'll have to go in and index the individual documents and then release them. So nothing will be made public until we've done that work, as we're doing now mm -hmm. with the books that we have the capability of scanning okay. and indexing. Okay. Um, yeah. and, and Record Force has worked with COPS. So you, they, you mentioned that. That's um, mentioned in here. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. That's great. Um, the other part is I was. Uh, uh, Social security numbers are going to be redacted um, from what? So in some of the older documents, um, um, deeds and mortgages, uh, 
individuals actually have to put their social security numbers. Okay. This is something that I ran by the LCP, I ran by COTS, and I ran by our town attorney. So we are not liable as a municipality. I am not liable as a clerk if um, there are uh, social security numbers or EIN numbers on digital documents. Mm -hmm. There are disclaimers that COTS has. We have a disclaimer, and we are not liable if for some reason someone has access to those. It's, if someone comes in, anyone can come in and research the documents in the vault, you know, with access from myself. Mm -hmm. There are social security numbers in some of those other documents, so it's, it's more or less the same thing. Someone can come in, yeah. take a picture, take a copy of that. Um, some... Um, some people are choosing to go through and redact them as we have been scanning and indexing. We have been redacting those on the digital copies. We obviously you can't do those on the physical, um, but that's another service that Record Force COTS uh, offers is that they will redact those. They have um, ways of essentially you know, scanning for those uh, what would be um, seven digit numbers or what's an EIN, it's I think nine. Mm -hmm. um, so so they have ways of, of um, expediting that process. Yeah. Um, but uh, just for your peace of mind and more so for mine, I made sure that um, you know I didn't have to go through technically all the 75,000 documents that COTS initially scanned for us when we yeah. started our, our digitization. Um, it, I wasn't liable. The, the you know the town isn't liable uh, okay. for those digital copies. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So they do this. They won't do this on site. No. Uh, the one disadvantage um, between the two record forts and COTS is that record force will take the physical books um, and have them for ten days. Cost comes and, and, and does that work um, on site. Mm -hmm. You know, there are trade offs to that. Um, I don't know how many people were here when Cox was, was doing the scanning, but I assume it probably got a little tight in the clerk's office while that was happening. Um, and these are books that uh, are not generally referenced um, often. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and uh, the representative at Records Force has reassured me that in the event an attorney or real estate agent or someone needs access to that book, they would deliver it to us. So, um, in within 24 hours. So we would have to potentially reschedule with a, with an attorney or a title searcher, but those books, um, yeah. Um, hard to, to do title search when there's not much to offer uh, to sale for sale in Heartland. So, I feel confident that we will not inconvenience anybody, but in the event that we <coughs> reference one of those books, Records Force will bring that book back to us or uh, provide a copy for us if we have a, a book and page. Okay. I think it's good luck. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's actually exciting that you're able to get to this next level. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, our, our online uh, record copies revenue is um, is about uh, half of right now is half of what our service fee is, and then we make that up and, and then some um, with in house copies. Um, so it's not a net loss for the clerk's office and, and for for the town, uh, but more. People are, are moving in that direction. So, um, and it's a form of redundancy. It, you know, if anything were to ever happen to the documents in the vault, we could reprint those books. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, let's move on to um, new business item four. Um, uh, recently, I received a request from the Windsor Supervisory Southeast G Supervisory Union um, to um, yes. create a memorandum of, of understanding to use Damon Hall in case of an emergency. Um, the emergency would be at a school. Um, 
and they would want to use Damon Hall um, as a media center um, should something happen. Um, this is not uh, an event that would happen at the elementary school. Should an, an event at the elementary school happen, they would use an, another facility like the Windsor School or the Weathersfield School. Um, this is uh, to have a media center uh, that would be uh, positioned uh, in a town near where the event was happening. Um, so we have um, uh, Martin included in our, in our packet. Um, Just to clarify, so this is not, if there's an event in our school, this was an event somewhere else. Uh, within the supervisory union, um, um, and, and the event would be at, not at the elementary school, and which would then trigger Heartland being used as the media center. Okay. And we have also an evacuation point for the elementary school. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This is a different. Yeah, different. different so that's why it can't yeah. be used for this if it's Heartland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think we heard. Um, the fire chief john sanders talked to us one evening about when the lattice drill was crossing the kids through the current intersection it was quite a hairy proposition okay martin is there anything you could elaborate on or no you cleared it clarified it fine i will uh, i'll sign an email to him tomorrow okay. so i make a motion that we enter into a memorandum of understanding with the <clears throat> Between the Windsor School in the town of Heartland Hall. Oh, yeah, with the Windsor Southeast Supervisory Union. That's clear. Yeah. That's clear. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mandy. Will they really let us use their school as a warming shelter? <laughs> they may not have a generator. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I think that's it on that one. Um, town manager title. Uh, after our last meeting, um, um, Jim uh, took me aside and said that um, we might be wanting to change the title for Martin. Um, I went home and um, looked up what the difference were between the two words that we're talking about here, acting versus interim. Um, and and um, I'm, I'm concurring with, with Jim, and tonight we want to officially uh, uh, move Martin into the interim role um, as opposed to the acting role. Uh, the acting role would be for someone who's um, like Mr. Armerson was on, on administrative leave, um, um, or there's a, a physical uh, reason to be out of the office for a certain period of time, then someone is acting um, with, um, and we're now transitioned to that period where we're, we're acting. Um, so that's just, I think we want, just want to acknowledge that and make a motion to, to make that change. Right, make a motion to recognize Martin as the interim town manager. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 That was quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we turn to the interim town manager <laughs> for their update. <laughs> Um, number one, obviously, we've, we've taken care of. Uh, I, I, me, I have to go, but I want to ask the board to do a favor. Uh, my next door neighbor, Tom White, is ill, as you probably know. He, he's out of the hospital. He's at home now. His children are there. Could I ask you folks to send a get, get well card and keep him in your thoughts and prayers? Mm -hmm. I, I consider that, I think, as a part of the whole neighborhood, it's a very thoughtful thing to do that. I don't think it requires a motion. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Thank you. I had no idea he was there. I wasn't aware of that, and I miss his phone calls. I usually get a call. <laughs> and he usually drives on by past my house at 610. That's too bad. That's too bad. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Dave.
All right. Um, I reached out to the state police. I reached out to the state police to uh, patrol during the construction. Uh, Martinsville at first because of the school was still going when the project started. We didn't want people speeding and shortcutting through there. Um, uh, the officer said he was going to do his best. He wasn't sure, so I reached out to Ryan Palmer to see if he would uh, be able to do some time. So um, we have a three-week contract with uh, Windsor Sheriff's County, $65 an hour. I asked him for two or three hours in the morning and two or three hours in the afternoon um, to, to keep, keep the speeds down, um, keep people honest. I asked him to please He'd be nice unless the person obviously decides not to be nice. Um, if you notice, though, uh, Martinsville, there's signs at each end that says not from traffic. Um, I've done everything I humanly can possibly do to try and keep the traffic off Martinsville. Um, I've been watching the three corners uh, construction, and there's been traffic backed up, and I've timed it, and it's never made it to three minutes. Yeah. It's been pretty quick. Yeah. Have there been complaints nope. from people on Martinsville Road about? No, nope, but okay. I, I get a couple phone calls that what ifs. But nothing. At no, this no point. Okay. nothing at this well, point. We've had no complaints. Like I said, uh, the traffic's backed up a couple times. Pretty quick. Though. And it's two minutes, two and a half minutes at the most. Um, so it's it's gone very smoothly. So just so how many hours? You said so two or three in the morning, and two or three in the afternoon. Five. Two hours. Yeah, five days a week. Twenty-five hours. A week. Yeah. Um, we get so hundred hours a month. Well, it'd be right, two and a half weeks, or three weeks. Ended up being three weeks. He started on the, uh, the project started on the 12th, so 12th, 19th, and 26th, so three weeks. Okay, so what's, what's the days. reasoning for three weeks versus? Because so I want schools out, and I want to make sure people understand that we're watching what's going on on Martinsville. Okay. So it's a behavior yes. modification yep. Yep. project? Yeah, that's what we're trying to, trying to do. And if we start hearing more problems, I'm, I'll probably do it again in July. All right, so the... Because the locals don't want people racing down the road either. It's about seventy-five hours. Just about, yeah. You know, price sixty-five dollars. You get enough on the budget to cover. Oh, absolutely. We never even came close to it. Yeah. Uh, I'm still on track with a one percent surplus in the general fund. Um, I will not do another budget update because now we wait for uh, the accountants to uh, to balance us out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everett Hammond has set his office up downstairs here. If you folks wanted to talk to him, he's here all day. If he's not in here, wait five minutes. He's in and out of here all the time, but please swing in and see him. Uh, Bill and I have uh, interviewed three people last week. They all went well. Um, we hope to make a decision by the end of this week. So we are going, we have Otter River, Otter Creek, Otter River Creek. The engineer firm. Otter Creek. Otter Creek is doing the um, engineering on the Jennyville culvert. I'd like to ask Rita to do what she's doing with the three corners with the Jennyville culvert. So we can get the RFP out because we have a very small window to do that next year, July to October. And we have to have our everything lined up so we can get into the water system and um, so I'd like to use um, Rita to facilitate, um, uh, do the RFP, the scope, and hopefully have a bid out by the end of September. So if I'm unfamiliar with the process, is that something two rivers normally does? Yeah, that's what she did with the, that's what she did with the three three uh, corners, and she said she could do it with the Jennyville culvert with no problem. <laughs> Uh, three corner street lights. Um, it seems like there's a snafu. It got missed. Um, we can't add them now because it would be a change. They'd have to change the permit, as we talked about last week, Phil. They can't change and add them. So over the winter time, we should pay attention to what the three corners looks like in the dark and figure out how to put lights up for next year. Martin, can you clarify what you mean by the street lights? Um, so the, uh, the main pole out at the, I think there's a street light on the, the pole that's at the, um, triangle. the triangle. Thank you. Um, we have a street light on the pole in front of Damon Hall. There's a street light on the pole outside of this side of Damon Hall on Route 12. 
-hmm. and there's no street light next to the post office anymore. And when the when we when they have the green space, there's no street lights on that green space. Mm -hmm. So so the ones that we're talking about not being in the plan are the ones on the green space and the one by the post office. Right. Right. Because these are well, they these may be gone. I'm not sure yet. Because this they were talking to me today on this one because there's only one wire on this pole. Yeah. And they said with, with what they're doing, there's no need to keep the pole there. I agree with that. So that pole will go. The one in front of Damon Hall, it's the same thing. It's one single wire that doesn't need to be there. So we may not have any lights. We may not have any lights. That could be pretty dark. I I I understand the change off change order aspect. Um, I really think we need to push and you know, yeah, see there. change the permit. Because so what do you mean by change the the one 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 permit? I don't know what that is. You know, it's a construction permit with the state. This is what we're doing on this project. Hmm. Any changes to what you want to do, you have to write up what the change is, submit it to the state, submit it to Green Mile Power if it involves them, which it will, and go from there. So the pole, they're having a problem with the pole right by the hairdresser because the sidewalk was going to go from five feet to four feet back to five feet. Um, they got Green Mountain Power, Comcast, and Vita all showed up out of the blue today, and they looked at the pole, and they all agreed they'd move the pole towards the apartment building one foot so it'd all work. But again, Green Mountain Power has to do a change permit. Uh, VTrans has to uh, approve it. Rita doesn't see any reason why they would not approve it because now it makes the sidewalk standard all the way right. down the uh, I, I don't know where this correspondence was. But Rita had sent out... Um, uh, an example of some solar powered street lights that were off Sykes Avenue and right near the junction. Um, I don't know how well they work, um, uh, especially in the doldrums of November and, and um, the light. But I don't think they're totally solar. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're totally solar? They're totally solar. Oh, I thought they would have a backup. Yeah, I thought so too. They supposedly hold power for up to 72 hours. Should ask Tom Hartford. They were just installed. Yeah. So if you drive down last um, week, Green Mountain, the oh. first town in Vermont to have the solar powered solar street lights. lights. Dan Austin, a representative from Green Mountain Power, brought in a packet describing it. The company's out of based out of uh, Louisiana. It's a nice picture of a cactus on the front of the packet. <laughs> Where they have a lot of sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> I did some, some research on the company. They don't work well in severe weather or snow load. We'll, so we'll see how they do on Sykes Ave, right. potentially here. Exactly. Um, I did chat with Dan outside the other day, and he thought that they were maybe in like the fourteen to fifteen hundred dollar range. I would have thought they were probably like five or six thousand dollars. They are. If we put four in, it'd be twenty two thousand dollars. Oh, so you got a quote from a quick, a down, a just kind of a damn dirty. Oh, so okay, so then a lot more than what Dan thought. Yes, yeah. that's what I thought. That we were gonna be like fire six so, grand. Yeah. If there's no light out here, what's that pole? The new pole for? Well, well, the light's hanging on it right now with one wire. So they want to take the wire off of it and take the take just take the pole. Which will take the light. But they're not going to move the light over to the new pole that's out there. Isn't there a new pole there? There's a new pole. The light's on the new pole. Oh. There's one wire on the new pole. They oh. want to take the new pole, the old pole, and just take, take it away. Yeah. I think we need to push. I think it's really dangerous. Let's see if they say it. It's also... Because the state of Vermont, I mean, they've been heavily involved in this. I don't see why it would be a permitting issue. It seems like Greenmont Power is going to be able to move it. They're going to have to go through permitting. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It'll take a week at least. This was a different question. Does construction stop during this process? No, uh, for light, no, it would not stop. Well, I don't know that answer. Let me rephrase that. Moving the pole, I don't believe it would stop because you're not changing the. 
for this, you're going to have to dig a hole or bury the part of the pole to wires to the pole. So you're changing the, the project. That, you know, but it's, we're gonna, it's worth researching. I wouldn't propose we do anything with delayed construction. Right. So I will call Rita and see what options, see if there's something. I, I think we should talk with Rita, but I think what at least for two of us are saying, and possibly what Tim is saying, and Amanda's shaking her head, we should really press on this one because I hate to sort of have a year from now someone digging everything up again to retrench. Retrench. Um, right. Exactly. And, um, and also, and from a, a, a Tom said, a safety perspective, safety. Uh, I mean, right. you know, go to January, it's getting kind of dark and people coming into the town hall. Right. Yeah. You no, know, you I don't know if there's ice, you don't. Right. Yeah. And what are you going to be doing? Put little solar lights everywhere? No, not enough light. Oh, Tesla battery wall. No, battery, what do you call this? Battery wall. Who is our original engineer on this? Not CGI, it's oh, um, GHB. I, I think we ought to. Let me press that. Let me press read it tomorrow and see. I'll, I'll be an ogre if you want me to. Sure. Yeah. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll send you an email tomorrow. I'll let you know. Me, uh, yeah. 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 Let me uh, find out. Uh, the delinquencies are at $82,000 at this point. Um, we're $29,000 ahead of last year at this point. So delinquencies are, are lower this year, which is good. Tax sale is moving along. Yesterday was June 18th. They had 30 days to respond. I had one respondent, I have a signed contract, I have a down payment and gonna make monthly payments. Another taxpayer is having issues and they're hoping to work it out. She does have a mortgage. Val Rainey's having a tough time at the Four Corners Children's Center. She was, she's asking the board if there's any way the board could waive June, July and August rent and electric bill. Val has been a citizen of Heartland for many, many years. The business has been there for at least 25. What's going on, Dana? I don't know. Has she ever missed a payment? Or She's always paid or... right on. Sometimes electric bill, she might pay two months at once instead of, you know, say every 30 days, she might pay 60. But no, she's always made the rent payments. She's always made the electric payments. And what about the cost to the town to forego it? Uh, the cost will be basically the electric bill. So it's, but are we taxed on that property? Because I think we were. So what was the tax? I don't know what her rent is compared to that one, the tax. That one it any for... uh, they're taxed on it. I don't know. Well, we, we I are can tell you rent versus tax, but there's property tax on it because it's leased out. Mm -hmm. but I don't think we should be in the business of yeah doing handouts to private. Corporations. Yeah. Ooh. I, I was fairly new on the board, if not brand new on the board, and a discussion about um, the board's role in these kinds of things came up. And um, My recall is that the board very strongly felt there was a need to support childcare within the community and that um, that we ought to yeah. be considered for profit entity. We have no idea what the profit is in this business or if, you know, if this is just additional profit going into the business that we cut. Well, that's not for us to make that decision. It's her business. Um, we're, we're just leasing. We just have a lease contract saying. Right. So we have a contract. Do we really need to, you know, walk away from our contract to enable a for profit business to potentially make more money? What's the average electric bills? Like, what are we talking here? We're talking $100 or a so thousand really, dollars? Really, so really, it's really, it's really, it's really, it's really, it's really odd. So it's Martinsville Electric. It's the hydro. Mm -hmm. So two months ago, her bill came in at seven hundred and fifty-two dollars. October, November, it comes in at maybe a hundred bucks. 
and some months, uh, September and October, sometimes it's zero because I did the research on that. I get the same thing at the library. I paid $1,250 two months ago, and this last month it dropped to $800. There's something in the spring, for some reason, it goes way up. So for June, July, and August, what would that, like what was thousand the last bucks year? worst case. And then, and then what is the rent? Eight, 16, 24, 25, 50. So, so it's about 20, uh, excuse me, 35, about 3,500. 3,500 bucks, right. And, and what is the, um, what are the taxes on that property? I don't know what we pay. No, Can I no. just say that, um, one of the charges that the ARPA funds of the town received was to help out businesses. Granted, that was due to COVID, but that could be something to take into consideration. And that one of the things that was looked at the ARPA committee was helping support child care and child education. And that is a child care center as well as a preschool. So just food for thought that that might be a utilization of ARPA funds. But yeah, you still have a mission. Right. We don't know at this table if she's making ten thousand dollars a year or a hundred thousand dollars a year. We have no way to know. So we don't know what our contribution is gonna do to her books. Um, I, my kids went to this um and I've known Val for in this capacity and I I, I don't think she's making too much money from this operation. Um, um, and I think we all know that there's been a child care crisis across the state. Um, and I worry that the ARPA funds, because we have the cooperative nursery school and there are other, our other daycares in town. Um, so I do worry about that. If she said we're helping one, how come we're not helping the other? What businesses qualify and what businesses don't? Yeah. If Three Corners Market is having a bad stretch while the construction is going to go on, are you going to waive their taxes? Again, I, this is child care. And, um, um, and there's an after school program um, as well as you know, the child care. So I, I'm, I'm going to keep quiet and let others, I'd like to hear what others think. So uh, I think, it, you know, I understand the, the child care piece of it. I'm probably not an advocate of any out-of-pocket expenses. So um, waiving electric bills, I think that, that those should really be on her. Um, it sounds as though, from what Stacy was saying, the amount that we charge her for rent um, in if we waived three months, it's not going, it will still cover the taxes. So there's not a burden to the town or, or a direct cost. So I would, I would be an advocate for waiving the three months, but not the electric bill. Just because they are center, really. I don't know of any child care center that's making hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit a year, especially that little little place. Maybe what this begs the question about is, are we providing, I struggle with why municipal buildings were actually paying rent, why they have to pay taxes in their way around that so that we don't have to necessarily do that. So I think the town is providing this building to to the child care center because it's providing a community service. Mm -hmm. And maybe we need to figure out ways of not having them pay taxes and or reducing their rent or whatever. I don't know. It's still a town building. Yes. So why does that trigger them having to pay? Well, we, we've seen the right. So it's how it fits itself. Because I think because we, we get rent for it, yes. therefore we're, it is not a tax-free public building. Mm -hmm. Technically, I think we should be paying taxes on the rec center for the nursery school because they, they collect money and they pay us rent. So, mm -hmm. I don't know how that one slipped through the. But, so I would suggest that we, um, till we make a decision, we waive June's bills 
And we just had Martin go up there and have a conversation with Al and talk to Al. We were, he was attempting to do that uh, and, and it just didn't yeah, come just together. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I think we need to support these folks. I mean, this is a, people need childcare so they can go to work. Yeah. And it would be terrible if she shut down. I don't know how many kids they support there. But do we have any, any information from her? Is no, I, I, just, I just couldn't make it over. So I think Martin, something Martin can answer some of your, we have we're not going to be doing an audit of her tax returns. Or oh, whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We should have some kind of right. last year's tax bill yeah. for them. Describe the situation. My daughter has gone to Fort Warner for four years. So one would think that I would support something like this. I, I don't. I don't think you should wait for it. I think rent is going to be very low. The discussion that Phil brought up, it was around increasing the rent, and the rent was not increased because the board wanted to support a child care facility. Bell's going to be hiring a new staff member starting in September. So clearly she has the capability to pay that staff member. During COVID, some parents paid, even though the daycare was closed, others did not. My family continued to pay to support Four Corners. I don't think I just don't know. I don't think that the town should be waiving rent and or the utilities personally. And I love Four Corners. They have been fantastic. I wouldn't change anything. They're one of the most expensive daycares in the area, probably for good reason. I, I personally don't think that it needs to be waived. They, 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 Okay, where can you rent a building that big for eight hundred and fifty dollars a month? And there are other businesses that are trying to, you know, build their business and, and provide that service as well. Provide um, provide a childcare service. Provide childcare services, and they're not getting handouts from the town. No, I understand. <laughs> Yeah, that was my hesitation with sort of using <laughs> off the phones and so on. Um, it, it's I, I think, Stacey, hold, hold on. I think we can talk about this in, in circles. I think maybe we should just let Martin gather the information. Um, I'm waiting for you guys to finish. I'm not sure where we're at here. Um, I was just reviewing the tax bill versus the rent, and it seems like the net is $443 a month for the time. So, yeah, pretty, pretty low net for the time for that bill. Better than being vacant like in the apartment. Did we just put a floor, uh, floor in that building? We just painted it, put a floor in it. So we just went to the floor. So there was a bit of money. Yeah. And we're going to put a new roof on it at some point. Okay. Well, and there's more work that is needed after we. Um, Stacey, did you have something that you uh, I was just going to say, it sounds like we just need to get more information. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I would. Um, do you want to make a motion, Tom, to, to waive the June? I think we should just table the discussion and have Martin come back and uh, and discuss with us his findings. Yep. And I'm leaving uh, leaving whether and now we'll leave it up to Martin about whether or not the uh, the rent will be paid or not till after. I mean, I think we should just wait. Okay. She, you know, and if, if we decide that um, we don't want to waive it, then she's going to offer for, for rent. But until then, let's just figure out what's going on. I don't think it's the end of the world. Something different but related. When we do Merrick Campbell requests, we generally have something in writing that explains what the situation is. Why would we not at least want that in the situation? She sent an email. She just said she was on, she was on top time. That's all she said. I didn't push it further because I don't feel it should be an email. So I was trying to get over there, but 
<clears throat> I had issues Thursday and Friday, so to get through the two days. Yeah. So, so. I would also like, as a policy for this board, that we don't bring things like this up for discussion until we have more information, because we're really we're speculating. Yeah. It gets kind of emotional, and we just don't know what what's going on. And so, if the t interim town manager gets a thing like this, he can, you know, he can just wait okay. and, and see and get the information. Otherwise. We have no idea what's happening. And then lots of great points have been brought up tonight. And, but it's really hard for me to make a decision. No, I, I agree. I think you know, we're, you know, just I'm not we're criticizing. Right. No, no, no. It's just, no, you know, it's new, new to me, too. Yeah, so yeah. Trying to make sure yeah, you're it's just, what's going on. Well, okay. Like I said, I tried to have her information. I just. But it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Are well, we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Um, thank, thank you for your patience. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Okay. Um, correspondence. Correspondence. Um, we get a correspondence from Tom Marsh, the Windsor Town Manager. Um, they're looking to do a shared service concept. Again, I don't. What you see in the email is all I know. So it's just just food for thought. You got in our pocket? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's basically food for thought. So look it over. And if you want to bring it up to a board meeting, please let me know. So I can tell you, since this is going through our office, uh, towns are finding that they're having difficulty hiring part-time staff. And so one of the, they, they're looking at two options. There's one is having a, Regional Planning Commission hire the person, and then that then there would be individual contracts with with the participating towns. The other issue would be is or other concept would be is a single town would hire uh, a person, and then that person would be shared. So you know, many times uh, I don't know. Uh, or use a zoning administrator. Most towns don't need a full-time zoning administrator. People who are the zoning administrator, they want to get benefits, so they want to work at least 30 hours a week. And so this is a way to see if they can try to make put that puzzle together. So that, and it doesn't, and they're, they're looking at this for assessors, listers, finance people, a lot of different things, just mm -hmm. given the employment uh, environment. Right. So that's, that's what's, um, that's what's going on. Thank you, John. Yeah. Yeah. I do think we should um, pay attention um, as we have uh, an ordinance administrator slot that's coming open um, and if I read the, read the email correctly, they're, they're looking at maybe 20% of an FTE or 25% of an FTE that may be available for right. that we could use uh, in our part. Um, yeah. So I do, uh, I, I, I was excited to read that. And, and um, I, think, I think there's opportunities there. Um, Quite a few comments tonight. Uh, we only have one hour working tonight, so I'm sorry about the sound. Just letting the, uh, the audience know. Only, see, we only have one hour on the table. So they've been talking about the sound. My next correspondent is uh, Spencer Braley in North Heartland owns Spenny's Hot Dogs. And he wants to know if he can set up his hot dog cart on the common up in North Heartland. So we just happen to have a vendor's ordinance. I included all this in everybody's packet. Yeah, so yeah, you did. How come I did my own research here? <laughs> <laughs> and Phil came up with um, vendor's locations are not permitted on roads bordering the common in Heartland Three Corners or the park in North Heartland. So by the sounds of that, you cannot have it on the common. I read that right. So it's under procedure item two. Mm -hmm. And that common is completely surrounded by 
Milk Street and Route 5. Right. And you couldn't have cars on the side of the road because somebody would definitely bring you a hit. This, this vendor is currently operating uh, in front of the, was it, is it a church or was it a church? Still a church. <laughs> it's a church. That's what that is. Yes, I was, that's I was wondering, wow, the church is something hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? I, I did the same thing. Yeah. It's on the property, next to the church. Oh, I was just curious. That was, that was okay. Wow. Mystery saw. There you go. Look at that. Just come to the select board and get all your answers. Have you been, Stacy? No, I can't do gluten, so I. He's going to start uh, hot sausages next week, I was told. Yeah, he's got personal money there now, too. So, so I, I told him I would not have an answer for him until the end of this week. It is this week, at the end of this week. He sent me an email last week. So I will let him know that he can't have it in there. According That's how our, I interpret this. According to our vendor's ordinance. And that is all I have. So we had the... Um, we had correspondence from um, the environmental or local environmental district on a project on Clayhill Road. There's a subdivision uh, that they are approving multiple driveways and I found myself, my head was spinning trying to understand that. Um, so I. This is follow. an active 50 per permit? Did yeah. Say that the, 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 this is the property that they were looking to subdivide. Um, there's a tower on part of the property. So tower. So tower. Did you understand that email, Brian? I was just passing it on to you. All right, thank you. So are these the, the proposed? Oh, there's a bat. <laughs> oh, oh, I like that. I hate bats. I hate oh, those that. things don't bother you. You got to shut the lights off <laughs> and open the doors. Lights right in front of you. Right. Door, door. And open the doors. And open the door. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Here they go again. Hi. Hi there. We had a bat. <laughs> guys are afraid of a few bats. Jeez. It was very big. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us. <laughs> okay. With that, uh, I think. So what, can we get back to that? Is those the proposed conditions and we can respond to the conditions? I, I don't know. I, can I you send us that. that? Yes, I can. Yeah, I, I'll find it. Because generally have we email? have like 15, have 15 to 30 days. I'll have Brian resend it to me. I'll have it to you guys tomorrow. Are, are you just using the existing driveway that already goes down to beyond the tower? Right? That's what it is. Oh, is that what they're going to do? Go up the main driveway and then have more driveways? Yeah, so, so if you go up the driveway and there's two houses there now, and there's, uh, from what I thought I read, they were going to be proposing to use what is sort of the existing trail that cuts in between now to the tower. So uh -huh. Could be wrong, but. This is the wood property in North Hartford. Yes. Yeah. Just south of, or uh, east of the um, reservoir area. It's not. I'll get the email. And get All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Is, this, is this an Act 250? <laughs> yes. That I'm trying to figure so out. So it should be in the Act 250 database. Is that what the yes, it is in there. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm sure I saved the email because I was trying to figure it out. Yeah. I couldn't. It wasn't very informative. Okay. Usually we get a letter yeah. for that. What company? Up. Coming agenda items include um, continuing discussion on the town management search, um, the planning commission town wide survey. Um, I need to do a little homework on what's happening there. Um, capital program plan, North Hartman Schoolhouse Committee, uh, employment policy. And continued discussion on the board. Corners, children, yeah. and the renewals too. Okay. Um, anything else for tonight? Just a quick question. In the minutes, it said 
a few trade was unlicensed salvage yards. But so I took it off because they I haven't heard a word from them for two weeks. Oh, is this? And today they came in and got the old permit because they're going to fill it out and move forward with it. Okay. So that will be on the agenda here pretty quick. And also on the next one, um, just a quick, sorry, I should have put this in. I just thought of it. Um, an ordinance for no electrical wires above ground in three corners. Correct. So we have to, we have to, we'll have the meeting. There's a process. I get the process. So we, so I was hoping that we started July 5th. We put it in the newspaper. We wait 14 days. So when our next select board meeting comes up, we approve it. Yeah, your name, and then that way all wires will be underground. Okay. Um, uh, we're set to march on the 4th of July. Clyde, you will not join us. He'll be up in the No, I, I refuse to walk with you people. I, that's what I heard. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm still feeling it's mutual. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still sulking over it. Uh, okay. But no comments when we walk by there. <laughs> um, I won't guarantee a thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, as a select board, is there anything we should be thinking about on the 4th of July or is it all unfolding? No, it's unfolding right on schedule. John's told me no no issues. Can have two cotton candy people there, so you can get your cotton candy on. And one dentist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Uh, just out of curiosity, what, what's the timetable for 4th of July? Parades at 10. Parades at 10. So you can yeah. gather on 9.30? Use at the firehouse? Uh, right. We'll usually, meet you at the sign shop. Usually you guys start at, at Bischoff, unless you yeah. want to start at the fire station. Yeah. Bischoff. And then uh, the Historical Society will be open at 9. And you're going to want a tour. We're going to have light refreshment today. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make one final motion, recognizing the you know, festive nature of times. Sure. I noticed it as well. Thank you. It's <laughs> the first thing I said when we walked in. <laughs> Trying to bring some sunshine to the board meetings. Okay. <laughs> we're, go we're going downhill. Bats now. <laughs> um, okay. Motion made to. I think there was a motion, right? I, I haven't heard, heard a second. <laughs> I haven't heard a second. We don't have to second. Okay. Have to second. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>